Shalom, everyone. Um, I just wanted to show you this new playlist that I have started. I'm entitling it uh, Truth and Lies, Exposing the JW, in other words, the Jehovah's Witness Cult. Okay. Um, I'm going to be playing a short video clip from Chick Tracks. Okay, because it's going to give a little bit of history about this. But I'm going to be reading a book that um, an ex-Jehovah's Witness um, put together over, uh, I- I'm not sure how long of uh, of time it's taken him to put this together. I read uh, his preface before, okay, and... Um, I do not have permission to to send this book to to anyone. Please do not ask if he gives me permission to um you know make this available to anyone who who would like to read it. Um I have to get that permission from him first. But he saw one of my other videos that that I did on um the Jehovah's Witness and sent me an excerpt from his book on all of the false prophecies. Okay, we'll probably, you know, we'll we'll get to that section of the book again, you know, and and we'll go down through some of them. But um, we we are going to just, um, we're going to start, we're going to start all over. Uh, So I'll be, you know, starting from the top in his book, and it's entitled Truth and Lies, okay? And um, this is basically one man's journey into discovering that he had been raised in a cult his entire life, okay? So um, let me go ahead and play just this, uh, this short clip first, and then I will come back. And we will go ahead and get started in his book, Truth and Lies. Can words taken out of one Bible verse change an entire doctrine? The doctrine that Jesus Christ is God? According to Jesuit-educated Norman Geisler, none of these variant readings affect any basic doctrine of the Christian faith. But let me tell you about Russell. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Back in the 80s, it seemed that everybody went to Bible studies. Uh, I did too, even though I was full-time in Bible college. I just couldn't get enough. Well, neither could Russell. First, He was drawn to a Bible study at a time when they said that Jesus was coming back. Of course, he didn't, and that should come as no surprise to you. But people started coming up then with excuses for why Jesus didn't return. Some said that the doctrine was right, but the year was wrong. In my case... Uh, One of those prophetic magazines said, well, it actually rewrote a date that was vital in the calculation process when he didn't return on schedule. It was something like that in Russell's group, too. Only he was bolder and split apart and started his own Bible study. In my Bible college, they pushed the 1901 American Standard Version. Here's a published by Thomas Nelson Publishing. They said it was way better than the King James and way more scholarly. Now, the original English one that came before the ASV was the English Revised Version, 1881. Here it is from Thomas Nelson Publishing as well, using Westcott and Hort's Greek text. Well, Russell loved the Revised Version, and he loved that scholarship. But he trusted those scholars and their pick-and-choose Bible version more than God's preserved words in English that tried and tested and proved for hundreds of years King James Bible. He trusted those scholars so much that he abandoned 
the doctrine that Jesus Christ is God because of what was in one verse. You find that hard to believe? Wait till you hear the rest of the story. I had to dig, but I found his words on the subject about that exact passage. Listen for yourself. Quote, The only text in Scripture which was ever claimed to prove or affirm that the Father, Son, and Spirit are one is a portion of 1 John 5, 7, and 8. This is acknowledged by all Trinitarians to be a forgery. So indisputable is this that the translators of the revised version omit the clause without note or comment. Now, you and I know there are many scriptures that taken together testify to the fact that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are God and one God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Ghost is God. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is not the Father. But only one passage brings it all together. 1 John 5, 7-8. Here it is in a real Bible, the King James. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. But in the gutted, revised version, it says this, And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three who bear witness, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and the three agree in one. So they stuck part of verse 6 into verse 7, took out most of verse 7, and part of verse 8. And poof! Away goes the Trinity. Russell said it himself. He dropped the Trinity because of that one passage. So did his students. And I'm not talking ten or hundreds or thousands. I'm talking millions of people through the years. Can words removed from a verse remove an important doctrine? Yes, ask Russell. Of course, Russell is dead now, but his organization isn't. Oh, and Russell isn't his first name. It's his last name. And his Bible study split up into so many groups that his successor decided to give it a new name based on the American Standard Version rendering of Isaiah 43.10. You know them today as the Jehovah's Witnesses. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Okay, before I get started um, with the first page in the book, let's read Isaiah 43.10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Okay, so this is the verse that uh, he was talking about, okay? Okay, so here is the front page of the book entitled Truth and Lies, okay? And here's the index, okay? This is not this person's real name. I'll just let everyone know this. Okay, so we will just go ahead and uh, reread the, um, the preface. And I'll probably do these videos anywhere from maybe 45 minutes to an hour. I don't want to make um, these videos be too terribly long. And I'll try to keep my own commentary to a very, very uh, minimum, okay? I'm just going to uh, 
read this uh, because this is uh, one man's journey out of um, Je uh, the Jehovah's Witness, okay? Millions now living will never join, okay, the preface. As a member of WBTS Corporation since birth, but been formally baptized as a Jehovah's Witness at a very young age, not old enough to vote or join the military, my awakening, as it is commonly called within the XJW community, has been a very slow process, often with emotional and psychological inner turmoil that can only be understood from knowing what it means to be a JW. Being now some considerable years older from being disfellowshipped in my earlier years and being reinstated some years later, up until this point, I always firmly still believed and would have been a fervent advocate of the organization and its governing body as God's representative and channel on earth, despite having some small, quote, unquote, minor disagreements with some doctrinal points. There is a wider story here that every fading or XJW has, and mine was the hurdle to me, was the hurdle to me finally waking up after two decades. I ask God that he grants me the courage to one day finding the courage to put it in writing as my own valid mind, mind wrangling testimony. However, in the above paragraph, I mentioned minor doctrinal differences. Well, that's how my mind seen them. I seen those differences of not being of enough significant value to stop me believing in the fundamentals of the faith for two decades, for two decades years, being one Jehovah God, his son, Christ Jesus, and the Holy Spirit from a monotheistic perspective, God's faithful and discreet slave being the governing body here on earth as Christ's representative, the heavenly class as the 144,000 as it speaks of literally in Revelation and that of my own hope to live on the paradise on earth as part of the great crowd. Okay, everything else I could wait on Jehovah to put right and therefore I was willing to put my own critical thinking aside. Simply put, I was ready to meet Jehovah and prepared to die for my choice in life, part of the wider story. Until this point, Christ through Paul himself gave us the instruction to thank for ourselves, to continue examining the scriptures ourselves, just like the Bereans. My journey officially started when a member of the governing body of the corporation stated clearly within his testimony to Australian Royal Commission that it would be presumptuous of us to assume that we are God's only channel here on earth. When Jeffrey Jackson stated those mortal words, my ears could not believe what I just heard, what it meant for me, what it would mean for me, how for many decades, even after having no direct association with the organization, apart from my family, every other week asked, asking me to come back and the constant references to Jehovah and Armageddon whenever we would meet. Even now and for some 20 odd years and not having had direct association, my mind would not accept what a governing body member had stated. After a month of inner turmoil, I revisited the video. I replayed it repeatedly in order to gain any window of misunderstanding so that I could go on in the mental mind control in my comfort zone to what I had been used to living with for the last 20 some years. This is what is known as cognitive dissonance, very real and very alive in any Jehovah's Witness who is confronted with information or teaching that contradicts what they have been taught and invested many years in. Simply, I did not want to know. I wanted to suppress what he said and what I had heard. Another month passed. I could not suppress it any longer. I took my head out of the sand. So I begin my journey with the following scripture, Matthew 7, 21. Note, throughout this document, you will see that I refer to the New World Translation often when quoting scripture. This is purposeful in order to refute the doctrinal teachings. Okay, verse 21 of Matthew 7. Not everyone saying to me, Lord, Lord, 
will enter into the kingdom of the heavens, but only the one doing the will of my Father who is in the heavens will. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name and perform many powerful works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. What started this independent and critical thinking off, why now and how does it make me feel? The following outlines my slow, solid approach to looking at the organization, and although my research may seem ad hoc, it shows my shock and horror at the start of my journey finding out about the ARC concerning the WBTS Corporation, where it unfortunately deals with the policy and procedures where it allowed for the existence unknown to the secular authorities of some 26,000 recorded pedophiles within the corporation. With that statement, finally, I'm free. And to use an excerpt of another hijacked scripture so widely used by the WBTS Corporation, the truth shall set you free. And free to look at other works in line with Mankind's Search for God, Book 8, Page 11. To study different religions need not imply infidelity to one's own faith, but rather it may be enlarged by seeing how other people have sought for reality and have been enriched by their search. Knowledge leads to understanding and understanding to tolerance of people with a different viewpoint. What if that research gives you emancipation? I am free. Okay, the beginning. Today, many of Jehovah's Witnesses will acknowledge that the founding member, C.T. Russell, started the movement that led to the formation of Jehovah's Witnesses in 1931. Okay, that's why I played that clip from uh, from Chick Publications first, okay? The pretext to this formation and the very name of Jehovah being uh, utilized as a self-fulfilling proclamation that the name of Jehovah is only widely used by the movement today and therefore we must be the people that Isaiah 43.10 spoke of. You are my witnesses, declares Jehovah. Yes, my servant whom I have chosen. Without going into the context of the scripture so early on as this initial chapter is dealing with historical evidence only, it is clear that whilst in reference, these scriptures will and can give comfort to any Christian or follower of Christ if we don't want to pigeonhole to one group that scripturally hijacked this verse. This corporation will often refer to one particular verse, as we will see time and time again, and put the literal translation onto the organization. Christ was looking what had he found. W.T., 2007, April 1st, page 22, paragraph 5. On arriving to inspect the slave in 1918, Christ found a spirit-anointed remnant of faithful disciples who since 1879 had been using this journal and other Bible-based publications to provide spiritual food at the proper time. He acknowledged them as his collective instrument or slave and in 1919 entrusted them with the management of all his earthly belongings. To look at the organization today and understand just how this seeming organization was chosen, we must look back to the specific time in 1918 that Christ chose this earthly organization or representatives. As the Watchtower stated itself in 1879, Christ was searching for his earthly representatives based upon the fact that Christ himself looked and found people using the Watchtower journals and other Bible-based publications as giving food at the proper time. Did Christ liken food at the proper time to such like journals? Let's look back into 1879 at the history of C.T. Russell up to the point of 1918 that the Watchtower makes good reference to such journals to see what Christ would have read in order to make this steely pro uh, proclamation up to the point when Christ made them anointed in 1918. Then look at the representatives themselves. Hence, our journey starts in 1879. 
the Russell split. A truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God and accept truth wherever you find it. Readers of the very first issue of Zion's Watchtower should have been alerted to his intentions to fuse the occult with Christianity when he stated, and this is from the actual Watchtower magazine book, okay? What is truth? This question is one which every sincere Christian should ask and seek to answer. We should learn to love and value truth for its own sake, to respect and honor it by owning and acknowledging it wherever we find it and by whomsoever presented. A truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. This is from Zion's Watchtower, July 1879, Volume 1, page 3. Okay, and we've got the um, the link here. Okay, um, and from the NWT translation, John 8:44, you are from your father, the devil, and you wish to do the desires of your father. That one was a murderer when he began, and he did not stand fast to the truth because truth is not in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks according to his own disposition because he is a liar and the father of the lie. However, we see yet another demonic quote. Zion's Watchtower of October 1st, 1907. Quote, our understanding is that this great day of the Lord began chronologically in October 1874. And from what we can learn, it is since that date that materializations have become more and more common. The evidence is too strong to be disputed that there have been numerous genuine manifestations. At this point, every follower of the movement should have burned the copy of Zion's Watchtower, ran from this apostasy, and left the movement. Unfortunately, the opposite obviously happened, where today they have 8.2 million indoctrinated followers who have been set on a course by Russell. Okay. set on a course by Russell, their founder, that whenever we find it, a truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. True blasphemy at its raw best. This was C.T. Russell's very first article written under his sole direction. This was an opening statement in that in this article. This is what Christ found as the food at the proper time. This is what Christ chose as his anointed class, eventually as taught by Russell, but confirmed by Rutherford, respectively, for 1918. Note, interestingly, within the letter section of this document, Russell makes reference to 1874 and 1878 as initial prophecies to the end of the harvest period, and that this is one of the difference between him and Barber. Of course, we now recognize, which shall be shown later, that this difference was due to Russell having taken the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza and relating this from uh, 539 BCE to 607 BCE to 1913 AD to 1914 as the end of the world. Furthermore, today the modern day WBTS Corporation See Russell as their founding member and one of Christ's early anointed class. This memory is enshrined in remembrance that he was a faithful uh, minister of Christ, translating the word of God fondly by candlelight. Yes, I do exaggerate a little. There was no light at all. In fact, we see the WBTS from very early memory of Russell write their own history. The document provides, provided shows with conclusive proof that after Russell's death, that Rutherford moved swiftly to oust the existing directors of the IBSA and during this time to the point of trying to wipe them from history. This is the reason why they adopted the name of Jehovah's Witness. Rutherford was clever. He looked for a self-proclaiming verse and found it in Isaiah 43.10. Thus, in 1931, they broke away from the IBSA not as the WBTS proclaims, 
was that the IBSA broke away from them or in the usual falsehood of the WBTS. A few kept to Russell's teachings. Thus, in fact, if Christ had chosen his faithful and discreet class, then Russell was his chosen, not Rutherford, who broke away from the teachings. WBTS has nothing whatsoever to do with IBSA. Within this director and shareholder battle that ensued, Rutherford very cleverly was able to keep all the printing presses. Thus, we see today Rutherford's shrewd boardroom battles and clever business sense that this is the reason why the WBTS have thrived up to this point. Particular note is in page one where it states that the directors were ousted. Then page eight and nine show they condemned Rutherford. Also contained within page two is a statement that the WBTS is not a religious society but a business corporation. Isn't that the truth? Hence you will see my continued reference within this document now being referred to as the WBTS Corporation. In my view, this document proves that the uh, schism was real and not a fluffy scenario whereby the IBSA adopted the name Jehovah's Witness for adoption only sake. There was a reason that has been hidden by Rutherford uh, nor in every other governing body member to date. Right from the start of their history, do we see the false lies and smoke and mirrors from this so-called self-proclaimed publishing company. We also see that at the time of Christ, choosing his faithful and discreet slave, from page two, he would have saw for himself this legal battle. Would Christ have chosen such people? No is the answer, no. Okay. I believe this is... uh Phrenology, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Christ loved phrenology. In his, che- in his teens, Charles Taze Russell, the editor, had been a member of the Congressional Church and a strong believer in the eternal torture of damned human souls in a hell of literal fire and brimstone. But when trying to reclaim an acquaintance, an infidel to Christianity, he himself was rooted from his sectarian position and driven into skepticism. Hungrily, he began investigating the heathen religions in search of the truth on God's purpose and man's destiny. Proving all these religions unsatisfactory and before giving up religious investigation altogether, he took up the search of the Holy Scriptures from a skeptic's viewpoint, now untrammelled by the false religious doctrines of the sectarian system of Christendom. This was from uh, the Watchtower of July 15th, 1950, page 212. What an admission. He knew so little of the Christian faith and what the Bible taught that an infidel drove him into skepticism. Not only that, he filled his mind with pagan occult beliefs before returning as an obvious last choice to the Bible. The human brain similarly ordered. Without claiming that phrenology has reached a perfection of development, without claiming that any has learned to read accurately from the shape of the human skull, the various traits of character therein represented, even while admitting that such a reading of character might be defective, and particularly so with those whose characters have been transformed by the renewing of their mind through the begettle of the Holy Spirit, Nevertheless, we may admit that phrenology, so far as understood fully, corroborates the picture given us in the arrangement of the tabernacle of Israel surrounded by the camp. Thus, okay, that was from July 15th, 1907, page 4028 and 4029. In his personal life, he was greatly influenced by a prevailing health treatment. Some have led this topic that Russell himself was interested in phrenology, which can be linked directly to a statement within the Watchtower of March 15, 1913 and January 15, 1912. The statement is, one's desire to worship God was due to the shape of one's brain. 
I will, for the record, state that no secular record or secular written proof exists that Russell utilized the services of free of a phrenologist, but I find the lack of secular proof negated with the evidence that a practice of a phrenologist would find its way into both an article twice. Further subjective conclusions, once again, Russell delivered a lecture at Motherwell after receiving in October 1911, Brother Scotland. It is reported that on that occasion, Professor David Dahl, a noted mental scientist of the British Institute of Mental Science, for his own pleasure made a character sketch of Brother Russell and sent Russell a copy. Some rep- report that the sketch was not made from a personal setting, but that Professor Dahl simply made his study by a general observation of the shape of Russell's head. A copy of this may be seen in Rutherford's A Great Battle in the Ecclesiastical Heavens. Okay, I've got to interject. I need to look this up. I have never heard of phrenology. We're going to go look this up just briefly. So we can try to understand what was going on in Russell's mind, why he would even be talking about this. Okay, it's from ancient Greek meaning mind and knowledge, is a a pseudo-medicine primarily focused on measurements of the human skull based on the concept that the brain is the organ of the mind and that certain brain areas have localized specific functions or modules. Although both of these ideas have a basis in reality, phrenology extrapolated beyond empirical knowledge in a way that departed from science, developed by German Physician Franz Joseph Gall in 1796, the discipline was very popular in the 19th century, especially from about 1810 until 1840. The principal British center for phrenology was Edinburgh, where the Edinburgh uh, Phrenological Society was established in 1820. Although now regarded as an obsolete, uh, a mall, uh, I can't pronounce this, I I apologize. A primitive neuroanatomy with moral philosophy, phrenological thinking was influenced in the 19th century psychiatry. Gull's assumption that character thoughts and emotions are located in specific parts of the brains is considered an important historical advance towards uh, neuropsychology. Okay. Um... I'll I'll leave the link to here if anyone wants to um, read a little bit more uh, about this. But, you know, to to be thorough to uh, Mr. Lawton's uh, book, this is mentioned, and I'd never heard of this. So I wanted to just briefly, you know, just try to get my own understanding, you know, so they think, you know, the brain or the shape of the head has something to do with, with God or what you think about God. It's kind of how, how I'm looking at this. Okay, well, now we're on to um, another chapter. Okay, this is the WBTS timeline, okay? So 1852, on February 16th, Charles Taze Russell, born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was born of Irish and Scottish descent raised in a strict Presbyterian home, father in clothing business, at age 16 is thoroughly rooted um, by non-believer in evangelistic encounter over the horribleness of hell. 1870, C.T. Russell attends meeting of Millerite Jonas Wendell Here's for first-time denial of existence of hell. Studies Bible extensively, departs from Adventism on biblical interpretation, teaches that hell does not exist. Oh, and who else do we know is teaching that hell does not exist? His own Bible study group in Pittsburgh elects him as pastor. Uh, orthodoxy is uh, cascaded, and slowly Russell becomes the sole source of truth for his followers. Sells clothing business for uh, $7 million to speak and preach. 
1874, according to Russell's theology, Christ returned invisibly, I guess called the second presence. He actually discovered this, quote unquote, in 1875. 1879, Russell publishes Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ Present magazine. This is the predecessor to their present magazine. The first issue went out at uh, 6,000 a month. I guess 6,000 issues is is what I'm uh, understanding this to be. Now printed with Awake at 1.1 million a day in 110 languages. Yeah. Mary's Maria Francis Ackley who understands Russell to be the faithful and wise servant of Matthew 24, 45. 1880, Bible students in seven states from East Coast to uh, Ohio said his system of theology was not his own invention. God revealed it to his humble servant. When asked how he received such information from God, he said, in 1881, Zion's Watchtower Track Society formed. 1882, Russell rejects the doctrine of the Trinity. You see, that's why I played that clip. And I believe I told Terry, and of course, no, that's not his real name. I believe I told him to contact um, Mr. Daniels at uh, Chip Tracks. Now, uh, I, I don't know if he gave him uh, a copy of of this book or not i'll I'll be emailing terry and 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 i'll try to remember to uh to ask him and i'll give him the link because he knows that i'm starting uh this to to read his book okay 1884 zion's watchtower and track society officially incorporated 12 years later zion is dropped from the title Okay, 1889, first building headquarters purchased by purchase in Allenge, Pennsylvania. 1893, Frederick Franz, fourth president of the society, born on September 12th. Uh, 1894, uh, Joseph Rutherford had first contact with Watchtower pioneers, missionaries. 1895, congregations slash Bible study groups encouraged to study Russell's uh, quote-unquote studies in the scriptures in their meetings. Russell's chief outlet for for spreading his truth, which uh, I'm assuming is these congregations and Bible studies, that it's his chief outlet for spreading his truth. The series teaches, uh, oh, okay, it's his, his study is called Studies in the Scripture, and it's his chief outlet for spreading his quote-unquote truth. The series teaches that God has a harmonious plan for the ages and that his plan is gradually revealed. It also attacks creeds, denies eternal punishment, trinity, the human soul, physical return of Christ. Okay, Russell felt that God had revealed his plan to him alone. Orthodoxy was to be attacked because it was satanic. Russell discouraged his people from studying his earlier works because they were immature theology, always in flux, seeds of progressive revelation. Yeah, I mean, we we don't want to look at uh, his progression into Satanism, basically. Okay, 1896, Maria, uh, Maria, his wife, reverses stance on Matthew 24, 45 to 47. Russell is no longer the uh, faithful and wife's uh, wise servant. He is now the evil servant of uh, latter verses. 1903, Maria files for legal separation. 1905, Berean studies Russell's teachings arranged topically now used in all congregations. Nathan Homer Knorr, third president of society, born on April 23rd in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, 1906. Rutherford gives self wholeheartedly to the movement. 1908, 
property acquired in Brooklyn, New York, future headquarters of the society, purchased Old Henry Ward Beecher Home and Church in Plymouth, Bethel, building renamed Brooklyn Tabernacle, 1914, God's kingdom to be ushered in on earth, times of the Gentiles to end with second coming of Jesus to crush Gentile powers. <clears throat> uh, Russell began to teach this back in 1891, the full establishment of the kingdom of God in the earth. 1950, Russell interprets, uh, reinterprets failure of 1914 prophecy, refuses to acknowledge failure. 1914 did bring an end to the Times of the Gentile, but it is progressive to be completed in a few years. 1916, Charles Taze Russell dies on October 16th, Halloween night. Okay, now this must have been before uh, Halloween was October 31st is is my my thinking. I mean, I haven't really done any kind of... (laughs) you know, real deep study on Halloween, different different dates. I mean, it's purely satanic, but... Okay, 1917, Joseph Franklin Rutherford is legally elected second president of the society. A time of great administrative uh, reorganization and restructuring begins. Rutherford begins a purge of all dissenters. Struggle with Paul Johnson of International Bible Students in England. Fight finally broke out at lunch at Bethel uh, headquarters. This is all in, uh, looks like to be 1917. Rutherford has physical tussle with Johnson. During the next 13 years, splinter groups formed in protest to the many changes that occurred in the society. Layman's Home Ministry Society, Pastoral Bible Institute, Standfast Bible Students Association, Dawn Bible Students, etc., 1918, President Rutherford and seven others jailed for anti-war activities gains martyr status. 1919, all eight leaders are released from prison after nine months. 1920, legal indictments against the eight leaders are dropped. Rutherford publishes, millions now living will never die. In this booklet, 1925 is predicted as the end of the world, the completion of all things. Okay, now we understand. Because see, he publishes millions now living will never die. Now see, he titled, the author of this book said, millions now living will never join. Yeah, if, if I have anything to say about this and God will guide these videos to get uh, the truth out there, okay? Rutherford shifts emphasis. uh, Okay, let let me, okay. Uh, In this booklet, 1925 is predicted as the end of the world, the completion of all things. Rutherford shifts emphasis in society for personal holiness to -to door-to-door evangelism. Rutherford carried on and intensified the organization's assertion that it is the sole a repository of God's truth that Rutherford himself is God's mouthpiece. 1925, end of world prediction vastly boosts Watchtower membership. People sell farms, businesses, homes, leave jobs, etc. in preparation for the year, for, for the end year passes quietly. And boy, doesn't it always do this with these, uh, with these date setters. Okay, uh, 1926, disappointed, tens of thousands leave society during next couple of years. 1927, Rutherford begins to change emphasis from Russell to the society as the faithful and wise servant. The servant class, the 144,000, is now God's channel of communication. 1928, Rutherford rejects Russell's great pyramid of Giza as a method of determining Biblical end time chronology. 1929, Romans 13 is reinterpreted. All governments of the world are satanically controlled. 1930, the doctrine of Christ's second presence is changed from 1874 to 1914. 
but see, okay, the doctrine of Christ's second presence has changed from 1874 to 1914. But it's the year 1930. Okay. Okay. 1931, during the 1931 convention, Rutherford's followers are called Jehovah's Witnesses based upon Isaiah 4310. 1934, Rutherford begins to guide the society into a new purpose, the vindication of Jehovah's name. This is a shift from being at least somewhat Christ-centered to being centered on Jehovah of the Old Testament. 1935, saluting the flag is idolatry. 1936, Rutherford increases the society's alienation from Christendom by proclaiming the cross as a pagan symbol. 1938, the United States is divided into 11 regions, 148 zones. 1939, the uh, in the continuing change from Christ-centered to Jehovah-centered, the official magazine publication has changed from the Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence to the Watchtower Announcing Jehovah's Kingdom. 1944, Joseph Rutherford dies, 108,000 members in society. Nathan Homer Knorr becomes the third president of the society. Great time of education and training, also a time of whitewashing the public image. Society membership uh, at this time in 1942 is about 129,000. In 43, theocratic ministry school established. Intent is to train men on the local level in public speaking, use of Bible aids, etc. Watchtower Bible School of Gilead formed in South Lansing, New York. This is designed to train the best for overseas missionary work. In 46, congregations organized into circuits overseen by circuit servants. 50 to 61, the New World Translation of the Bible is published and distributed. Under Noor's leadership, the Watchtower continued to maintain that the Bible could not be understood apart from their direction. And, of course, that's what all cults will do. You can't understand the Bible unless we interpret it for you. In 57, 13-story printing plant built in Brooklyn, New York. In 58, the Kingdom Ministry School is established to prepare and train circuit over uh, circuit overseas. Uh, in 60, new 11-story Headquarters built in Brooklyn, New York. In 61, receiving a blood transfusion becomes a disfellowshipping offense. Okay, I don't know why that would be, but, oh, yeah, okay. (coughs) (coughs) Oh, receiving a blood transfusion. I mean, are they into serpent seed or giants nephilim uh false i mean that that's like satanic too that that's that stuff's not real the book of enoch's not real okay maybe they think this has something to do with it, that you might get the blood of a nephilim or something i i don't know 1966 the year 1975 is revealed as the end of 6,000 years of man's existence. The millennial reign will begin in 1975. Okay. In 74, witnesses encouraged to sell their homes and spend remaining months in full-time service to Jehovah. Memberships increases dramatically since 1975 prediction. Okay. In 75, the year passes quietly. Little is said about the failed prophecy until 1979. During the next few years, many leave the society. Okay, in 77, Nathan Knorr dies. Society membership over 2 million. In 79, Frederick Franz elected to presidency. Power base has been transferred to the governing body. Position of president is now like figurehead. 80 to 82. Intellectuals purged from the society. Would this mean anybody who has a mind to think for themselves and realizes it's all a cult? Yeah, I could see why they would want those kind of people uh, purged from the society. 
Okay, in 92, Frederick Fran dies at age 98. Uh, Milton Heskell, elected fifth president of the society. Membership close to 5 million. Okay, so from 77... Fifteen years, they went from two million to five. And then the conclusion. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society was born because of the ability of a man to explain away his failed prophecies. According to Baldwin, a lawyer for the ACLU, the success of the Jehovah's Witness, the very thing that Russell warned against has come to pass. He warned that organizations that demand allegiance to maintain unity are harmful to human lives. He even identified forced allegiance as the cause of apostasy in the early church. Okay. Okay, this is going to be the last page that I show because in the next video we're getting into the uh, complicit organiz uh, organizational child abuse. This is going to be in video two. Okay, so the uh, schisms of C.T. Russell. Okay, um, let's see. This says, Russell simply adopted Sunday Adventist through Nelson Barber teachings, tweaked and set. He came up with nothing. Okay, so let's look at this here really, really quickly. Okay, so we've got Sunday Adventist over here. 1888, Church of the Blessed Hope. Um, 1855, Advent Christian Church. 1858, American Millennial Association, Evangelical Adventists. 1909, New Covenant Believers. Um, 1909, New Covenant Fellowship. Uh... 1955, uh, Laode Home Missionary Movement possibly is what this means. Uh, okay, so 1909, New Covenant Fellowship. 1918, Layman's Home Missionary Movement. And then in 55, this. And then in 56, uh, Epiphany Bible Street. 1928, the Christian Millennial Fellowship. 1931, the Jehovah's Witnesses. 1931, the Dawn Bible Students. 25, uh, the Servants of Yah. 1918, Pastoral Bible Institute. 36, Watchtowers of the Morning. Uh, 1918, Stand Fast Bible Students. Um, 1923... Um, Elijah Voice Society. Okay, so this is a picture taken from from a video. Okay, like 1881 ZWTTS Nelson Barber. You know, uh, so this is why he's putting Russell simply adopted Sunday Adventist through Nelson Barber teachings tweaked and set. He came up with nothing. Okay, so next video we will get into complicit organizational child abuse. So, all right, I will go ahead and uh, close out this uh, this first video. It will be in the the playlist. All right, so um, you'll want to be watching for uh, part two because my my intention is to read through this entire book because I want people to understand exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses are so that you can get out of this cult and truly find the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. All right, guys, with that, I will bid you all shalom.